I'm Brandon Staglin. As president of One Mind and a schizophrenia survivor, I stand for healing. I'm living proof that with loving family support, early science-based medical care, and continued community involvement to build agency, one can recover from even the most debilitating of serious psychiatric illnesses. My experience on Recovery's Rocky Road has taught me values of scientific curiosity, love, and social responsibility. Today, I'm proud to use these values to lead an amazing team at One Mind to accelerate brain health for all. We're tackling the brain health crisis by advancing and enhancing science, services, and society. Today, I'll describe how my organization, One Mind, is applying these principles to scale up recovery. Evidence shows that by empowering clinicians to partner with young people and their families who are at risk, to prevent them from developing serious mental illness, we can reduce criminal justice involvement, and improve outcomes nationwide. The problem of serious psychiatric illness is widespread and underappreciated. Based on recent research, an estimated 100,000 to 300,000 U.S. young people each year develop a psychotic illness for the very first time. And those that don't receive treatment early may find their lives derailed. I know this from experience. These people are likely to be involved in the criminal justice system. In fact, the rate is 46% among individuals with schizophrenia. In too many cases, criminal justice involvement takes over a person's life. 15% of men and 30% of women in jail have a serious mental illness. When I had my first psychotic experience at age 18, I felt utterly alone. But my experience was typical with regards to criminal justice involvement. Beginning on a warm autumn evening in 1990, my brain broke down. In the terrifying aftermath, I was convinced I had lost the right half of myself. I wandered for days, desperate to feel like a whole human being again. At my wit's end, I took my dad's car and drove out of my hometown. At 2 a.m., I found myself hurtling down the freeway toward the Pacific coast. Alone there in the dark, I thought I had my chance to recontact my inner self. I closed my eyes. A siren pierced the rushing silence. My eyes snapped open to the glare of highway patrol lights in my rearview mirror. I gasped and I cursed. On the verge of tears, I pulled the car off the off-ramp and onto the curb. My knuckles white on the wheel, I lowered my window and prayed the police would let me go. The harsh call came through the window. May I see your license and registration? Why are you covering your right eye? Why are you snorting like that? I had no way to explain that inhaling made me feel almost like the right half of myself had come back. Punk, I think you're on cocaine. You can't even walk a straight line. Get in the car, you crackhead. At the station, they made me pee in a cup and blow into a breathalyzer tube and made me wait for the results to come back. The cell they made me stay in that sleepless night was crowded with jittery arrestees. At 9 a.m., I drug test negative. They discharged me with a bus pass, no referral to services, and a lingering fear of the system. I learned from this experience that my mentally ill behavior could endanger myself and others and that trying to explain my experience to others could endanger me even more. I decided that I needed to cure myself alone before this could happen again. Because the stigmatizing experience at the hands of professionals hammered home that I did not want to either be or be perceived as crazy, I resisted participating in treatment for several months thereafter. When I was first hospitalized, a few days later actually, my frantic resistance brought me this close to being involuntarily committed. In retrospect, I see that the police who arrested me had been trained to work empathetically with folks experiencing serious mental illness. My recovery could have started on a much better trajectory. But unfortunately, today, police contact is often a young person's first encounter with professional intervention for serious mental illness. I believe this association contributes to so many at-risk young people avoiding or resisting professional help for recovery. In fact, only about half of young people who experience serious mental illness access treatment. This proportion is actually even lower among black and Hispanic communities, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. There are three things we must do to correct this. Support the training of first responders in compassionate crisis intervention as part of criminal justice reform. Correct mental health inequities for underserved communities. And educate, screen, and care for youth early to help prevent so much serious mental illness. Through advocacy and funding, One Mind is engaged in all three. We produced a five-part short documentary series on criminal justice reform as exemplified by programs in Florida, which you may have seen in the materials for this event, to educate the public to raise support for such reform with a focus on crisis intervention training. 
These have had a resonant impact, about one and a half million views in the very first month alone. Black Minds Matter is a full-length documentary and public engagement campaign planned for national public television on the mental health impact of racial stress, microaggression, and generational trauma. We'll highlight the neuroscience behind the experience and provide hope by connecting viewers with resources online. One Minds Aspire initiative is expanding and improving person-centered, culturally competent early care to help youth at risk for serious mental illness thrive. We set two bold goals to achieve by 2040. Expand access to gold standard early care to 100% across the U.S. and to triple the recovery rates from serious mental illness to 75%. Aspire has had a promising impact, such as a 50% increase in involvement in school and in work among patients, we're collecting data on reductions in criminal justice involvement to see how well this is working. And we're collaborating with a private insurer, Kaiser Permanente, to supercharge access across three communities. If you'd like to learn how you can support this work, please contact me at brandon.staglin at onemind.org. With funding, expertise, or lived experience, your participation can be instrumental by keeping at-risk youth out of prison and off the streets. Together, we can help young people to thrive. Thank you very much.